Hi and welcome to the vlog. How are you all? I am feeling so much better. She's ass broken. <clears throat> Sorry, that's really not related to COVID at all. Um, that was just a beautiful piece of irony. Um, I, I think I look much better, like I have colour in my cheeks and all of those kinds of things. So uh, yes, we are definitely getting there. These are not new glasses. I know they're different from the ones you usually see. These don't stay on very well, so I tend not to have them on when I have the kids, but I actually have three, three different pairs of glasses to change between, and today I felt like these ones. All right. As I said yesterday, I'm gonna show you my bullet journals for 2021, which are these two. So first off, I'm gonna start off with some disclaimers. Disclaimer number one is that uh, in the description of this vlog, there will be affiliate links. So if you do click on any of them, they're Amazon affiliate, and you end up buying anything off Amazon, then I have a chance of making some money off that. So please do. And my second disclaimer is that my bullet journals are far from perfect. They are far from perfect. I have looked through a few of these Bujo flick through videos and um, by the looks of it I am supposed to have a bullet journal with no mistakes in it and sort of a perfect running through the year theme. I'm supposed to start a new journal at the beginning of the year and work through it. Uh, I'm supposed to have perfectly manicured nails and I'm supposed to sound like Phoebe from Friends when she works in that massage parlor. I might be able to add some plinky plonky music, but I doubt I'll be able to do much about any of those other things. <laughs> Regardless, I'm gonna show you my bullet journals. First off is my Otogami that I started halfway through 2020 and continued in 2021 until I ran out of space in that. And then I moved over to the Little Journal Company which I started then part way through 2021 and I now have a little bit left so I'm going to keep going and get myself a new journal that I'm probably starting in April, I'm guessing. If you do want to know which ones are my favourite bullet journal brands and which one is my absolute favourite bullet journal brand then head on over to my website where I have a blog post called my favourite bullet journals, clues in the name. And uh, let's get straight to it and have a flick through. First up is my Otogami and 2021 started halfway through the journal. I don't start a new journal at the new year. I actually just keep going where I am because I think anything else is a bit of a waste. But I made this spread for the start of the year just to sit down and be a bit creative. And it was a lot of fun actually, particularly this one. And then it's going straight into January with a monthly spread, which I glued on top of a page that didn't work out the way I wanted. And a habit tracker, which is actually really quite big. And I don't recommend having a habit tracker this big, but I had a lot of things that I wanted to remember to do every day, which is really what it was all about. Journaling, exercising, doing tough shit which I call it, uh, anything administrative related to the kids and a lot to do with the YouTube channel with record and edit and post on social media and working on the business. At this time I was doing a Dutch door weekly because I have so much that I need to fit into a week. I really enjoyed having a to-do list and a ta-da list. The ta-da is everything that you haven't put on your to-do list, but you do regardless that week, and why not celebrate it? Space for notes and space for time blocking, a menu. This tracker here is vitamins and medicines. I have a medicine that I take every other day, hence the line through every other day, and it was a really good way of, of helping me keep track of it. I then changed it slightly for the next week and did them horizontally which gave me a little bit more space and I added a spending log that I wasn't really using and I had another random note section here. This actually was really quite a good way of doing it. 
except that I had to sit and cut my Dutch doors. February started with a bit of being a bit creative. I like having at least one page of creativeness in between the months. This tracker here is where the girls were when I went through a few different iterations of trying to visualize the childcare schedule. Page I never used, and again the habit tracker. And I kept this style of Dutch door for a while. And then I got a chance to be very creative, very Viking theme this one. Going into March and the same kind of Dutch door, not using it a lot this month. Can't really remember why I lost track of it and we're back into it really. I thought that one was funny. It needed a bit of a Avengers kind of style to it. Here's a sort of random spending money on the business tracker that I was trying, but um, I never really got very far with that. And this was me sketching out the start of a poem that I wrote for a poetry smash in my Toastmasters. I finished the poem and it is up on YouTube, so I'm going to link that video here. I am really, really proud of how that turned out. Moving into April, I think I was supposed to make an April monthly and I never did, but I did a very colorful habit tracker that month. And then I tried to have four pages per week. So the to-do and the to-da up here, bigger sections for time blocking. And of course we ended up in hospital then, so I uh, wasn't using the time blocking all that much or indeed the journal all that much that week because hospital stays always throw me completely out of whack. But I kept going for a bit. This wasn't my favorite spread, I have to say. It wasn't really working for me. And that's the end actually of this particular journal. At the end of it, I have I had, rather I should say, uh, some collections. I only left one of the collections in here, which is this that I made to write things down that I meant to look up and never used. The other collections I had in here, I actually cut out and I put at the back of my next journal. So we're halfway through the year or partway through the year and I needed to start a new journal. As you can see, I, I did put some stuff in the key, but I didn't really use the index and I didn't use the pen test page, but as I do at the start of every journal, I decided to have a creative spread. I was really pleased with how these two turn out. And then into May, we're back with the Viking theme, apparently. I did use the April spread one more month, and I was using it a lot more in May. And then a lot of random notes. I do like to do rune divination, hence, notes about the runes and a beautiful quote by Neil Gaiman and then into June. This is the worst habit tracker I've ever made. <laughs> First of all I didn't actually like having to keep doing that and then drawing out the tiny hearts was a pain in the proverbial so even though I went for the hearts as a kind of self-love thing no no it just wasn't doing it for me however I got the start of a weekly spread that really works for me with time blocks for each day and an Alistair method task tracker, which is this where you write down all the tasks you, and you have the days of the week and then you make a little dot in the day you want to do it, cross for having finished it, arrow for having migrated it to the next week or a later week. And this really works for me and there's some space for notes depending on the week. Oh look, another hospital stay. But it also means that the week after, I had nothing set up and I just had to use a random <laughs> random page. I did a week long uh, big Alistair and then just started again the week after. And from here I've been using this spread quite well. Another bit of being creative and into the next month. Goals for the month I write down here or what I sort of want to achieve for the month I write down here and then I can look here every week and put things into my Alistair. A random page with ideas for the summer holiday and ideas for vlog and blog posts and then on to the next week. 
with another blooming hospital stay. Okay. Moving into August, being pink and sparkly. I do different colors for every month, just because I like changing it up a bit. Really settled into this particular weekly theme now. Some weeks I use it more, some weeks I use it less. This was a rather crazy week, really. Didn't plan the days out all that much, but there's a lot of stuff that's going on sort of underneath it. Oh, I like that. I copied this off somebody on Pinterest, but oh, I'm so pleased with how it turned out. And then packing and planning for going up to Northumberland. And we're into a new month. For September, I used my stamps instead, which was fun, but it was rather messy. And to be honest, it actually is quicker to write it down than to stamp it. And, we, and we're starting to have weeks where I use my bullet journal less and less. I mean, this one is, this is a really messy spread. I have depressed day. I have, I can't even read what I've written. No sleep. Poorly Alice, clearly not doing great this week. I mean, what, uh, yeah. <laughs> Just, no, no. And this is when my mental health is really starting to go downhill. And I can see that in my bullet journal, as I keep moving forwards, I am using the bullet journal less and less. Alice and I are dreaming of getting a cat. I didn't actually make this cat budget at this time. I made it very, very recently, but I had an empty page in the journal I wanted to use up. And uh, I realized that I'm really gonna have to have a thousand pounds for the first year in order to afford a cat. Quite a lot of these things I've overestimated. It may very well end up costing a lot less than I anticipated, but I like to be prepared knowing what's to come. And then we have October and I really like the spread. I like the colors. I like kind of doing a bit of doodling and some stamps. Uh, but if you look at my habit tracker from the second half of October, I just haven't done it. And here is where I started feeling really, really bad and I needed to get some medical help and professional help for it. So the first week of October, I've used the journal well, the same with the second week. And then, boom. I didn't have it in me to, to actually use the journal, even though the journal is a great mental health aid I it was too much for me to do at that point same with November very empty habit tracker I started using the weeks a little more again just to keep keep track of what's going on what's happening and um, having a chance to be a little creative and trying what I can do to keep myself on track Here's another week that I didn't set up and I just wrote it straight out like this. So it's kind of hit and miss, but I was working on it. Here is another spread that I didn't do at this time. I did this one very recently as well, but again, I happened to have a couple of free pages in the journal and I used them. This was me trying to work out when do I have availability to do work and hobbies and friends and all of those kinds of things. So anything in purple is when I have the the girls. Anything in red is time that I'm simply not available, like school runs. I was doing therapy here uh, when I made this. Now I'm, I have a group here instead. So th that's swapped around. Doing Eileen's lunchtime uh, and school runs again. So the green blocks are when I have time to do things. And it was a really useful exercise because I can see in a week when I don't have the girls, I have roughly 53 hours. I think it's kind of healthy not to try to do too much in the evening. And on a week I haven't got the girls, I've got 23 hours and I need to plan and manage my time accordingly. And more importantly, I need to manage my expectations of myself accordingly. And I will come back to this managing my, managing my expectations accordingly in a moment, because we're gonna to come to another double page spread. That was a similar exercise. Heading into December, and you're still using the same spread. This spread has worked really well for me and I'm gonna keep using it. And just keep going. I started adding my menu at the top here now. That is the one thing I do miss is, is not having a space to add the weekly menu. And this was the spread I was talking about. 
This group therapy I was doing wanted us to do a baseline diary to see how active or inactive we are and that therapy was very much aimed at people who needed a boost to get themselves activated and I really don't think that's me. Clearly I am doing too much and what I needed help with was ways of managing the overwhelm. But it was a again an extremely useful exercise just to see what have I got on my plate and after doing this I realized that I need to plan in time to rest I need to plan in time to be mindful and more importantly I need to plan my time so I try to do one thing at a time and that's us heading into January after that so I'm not going to show that but I, uh, however I did mention that I had cut some collections out of the old journal and taped them in here and one of them is this books that I want to read collection it's not massively populated but there's some there on the back of that because it was empty I did this year's period tracker I also have a list of things that I want to watch on telly. I did a lot of telly last year. It's not like me. I did do this half yearly spread, a sort of year overview, but I never used those, so I'm not going to bother. And this is my period tracker for last year as well. I hope that's not too much TMI showing it to you, but I do have different coloured circles for different things. I am tracking... Uh, period pain and headaches and night sweats because you really need to know that but I, I am a 45 year old woman so early signs of menopause are starting to show up I don't expect to go through menopause for another 10 years or so but um, it's interesting to see how it develops all right there was the flick through of my bullet journals which I hope you enjoyed if you do enjoy these videos then hit the subscribe button share my videos and more importantly right now is there anything else you want to see, particularly something like the bullet journal? You know, things that are easy for me to record while I'm still child free. This is the perfect time to ask. For example, how I draw up my spreads or anything else that I might do with it. Perhaps there was something you saw today that you want me to explain a little more. Or... Yeah, go right ahead. Ask me. What I thought personally was really interesting in doing this flick through was how clear my mood affects my journaling if that makes any sense that um i didn't realize that it was quite that obvious but there it was i do actually use multiple notebooks i have another journal that i call brain dump in which i write my gratitude journaling or if i just need to do some daily diary style writing and getting things out of my head. That all goes in there because I actually want to keep that very private and very separate. And apart from that, I've done a bit of cleaning and tidying today, I spent an hour. I've done a bit of mindfulness today. I have decided to do a seven day daytime meditations challenge uh, on the Michael Seeley page. He has a, a playlist. And uh, just do those every day to see how that affects me obviously I know it's going to have a positive effect and then after I'd done that I lay down and I had a bit of a nap because I was actually quite tired after spending an hour walking around the house and tidying up and that was just tidying not actually really any cleaning and now I have a few administrative tasks to get on with and find dinner eventually I have just inhaled a big bowl of popcorn so I might I might manage for a little while before I need dinner. I am not bothered doing a lateral flow test today because yesterday's was still fairly clearly positive. So if I do one today, it's going to be a slightly fainter positive. So I thought I'd give it two days and see how tomorrow's look. But that will be all from me today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again very soon. Bye.